Hi, this is Maria Lang from Art Talk, and I'm one of the main instructors in our art course. And today I just want to give you a brief tour of our course, and I want to answer these three questions. Why Art Talkin? A peek at some of our lessons, and why Art Talkin is affordable. So, why Art Talkin? I'm going to answer that by showing you through our course very briefly. And Art Talkin is broken into two main uh, categories. The first is a course that teaches you how to draw, and the second is a series of different instructions on different media, colored pencils. Uh, we also have some instructions on animals, but also watercolor, watercolor markers, and all different kinds of things. These are projects that are more along the lines of follow along for fun. But the unique thing about Art Talkin is that it, uh, it takes you all the way through learning how to draw, from the very basic up to about advanced intermediate, and we teach you skills from the most basic, teaching you then after that only things that we've already taught you, building on skills that you already have. And we teach you not only how to draw, but how to see, which is something that's often forgotten. Uh, understanding what is, what is in front of you in an artistic way is something that is very crucial for being able to draw it, but oftentimes we don't think about that. And so, art talking makes it easy for anybody to learn how to draw. So many times I've heard people say, I cannot learn how to draw, I'm not skilled. I don't believe that for a moment. I've seen so many people with the correct kind of instruction uh, really create amazing works of art and this is the kind of instruction that I am passing on to you. So we believe Art Talkin teaches very well but another great thing about it is that when you sign up for it you have access to the entire course. You don't have to start from the very beginning although we really recommend that you do or you can just work on the, uh, the uh, projects down here and it's for your whole family so you could have one person in the drawing course and another person in the watercolor course and it's the same price for your entire family to be signed up and you can watch all the videos as many times as you want and each of these is a category so beginning to draw has lots of videos within it as do each of the others so now that we're here let's get a peek at some of the lessons and so we start out, like I said, very basic, learning how to draw circles and lines, and then learning to put those things together to create simple objects. So for instance, I'm going to show you the first educational video here. These others are kind of preparatory things. And you would come in here. What I suggest is to take your pencil and make the motion several times in the air before you put the pencil down. So get your hand in that mentality of doing a circle. And then lightly start to press down. And then you can slow down a little bit if you want when you start to go down heavier. And it's a better circle. So that gives you a sense of how the very beginning of the course is, but of course we move way beyond that. And so I just want to show you a couple of other lessons that we have so that you can get a sense of where we move. And I'll just give you a peek into a couple of the modules, even ones that I'm not going to play videos from, so that you can really get a sense of uh, the step-by-step. -step. So you can see things are getting a little bit more complicated as we go, but still pretty basic in this module. Moving into shading, we learn the technique of shading, and then we start to apply it to simple objects, and then we get more and more complex. And uh, we learn, for instance, how to apply the value scale, which is a way to know how to shade to an object. We've talked about shading and we've talked about the value scale, but now it's time to put the two together and actually use the value scale in a drawing. And so we're going to start with this teacup. And before we actually start drawing, I want to point out some of the values that we would see in the teacup. Now, some of the easiest to spot might be the dark ones because 
we look at it and we see that it's really dark and so we assume that it's a 10 and this would be a 10 it's the same value as the 10 on the value scale and so that would tell us that we could draw that part of the cup in our drawing just as darkly as what the value scale is right there and we go on to discuss that for a little bit but later on we get into actually drawing it and let's look at this middle area now. I would say this is about a five on the value scale. And the middle ones are kind of hard to see because uh, they're not as extreme. And so they tend to look more the same to our eyes. And finally, we end up with a finished mug drawing. Moving on, we have a still life module that teaches how to draw overlapping objects, how to shade it, and then building the still life. And finally, you come in and you get to draw what you built. In the lesson, you would have drawn this along with me, but I'll bring you in where we start shading it. Let's start with the teapot. And of course, this side is a very sudden change from light into dark because of a corner. It's not like curving, and so you don't have that gradual change. And so we'll go ahead and just draw in this darker area here, which is actually going to end up being pretty much a 10 on the value scale. We can go ahead and darken it later if we have to, but we can go ahead and establish now where those shadows are going to be. And in this area here, we're going to actually have a little bit of reflection on from the background and possibly from objects over here. So it's not going to be quite a 10, but and also right here at the corner, there's going to be just a little area that's lighter. So. We don't want to get those as dark yet, but we can, so we'll, we'll leave it lighter. We know that it's going to be quite dark in this area, but just as a reminder not to color it in, I'll leave that. And so you can do that sometimes. You'll know that it's going to be darker, but you can leave, leave it lighter just as a reminder to you when you come back. This too is going to be dark here, but coming down it's going to be just a little bit lighter, so I'm going to leave that for now. A little area in here is dark, but around it is lighter. After that, we get into perspective, which is uh, understanding how objects appear when they're closer and farther away from where you are viewing them. Uh, we have a lot on faces and the human body. Uh, I'll give you a peek into the faces module. And so we have uh, instruction on how to draw the face. And then after we know how to draw the face, then we have a foundation so we can do more with it and we can create emotions with the face. And then we have instruction on seeing the face from different angles because you don't always see somebody from right up front. And finally, we have instruction on how to draw a specific face. So suppose you want to draw your mom. We give you the tools to know how to make it look like your mom and not just like a generic woman. And so in how to draw the face, you might think that that would be really difficult. Most people do. But we really break it down into each individual step the eye. It's not a big project by itself, especially by the time you've gotten to this point. The nose, the mouth, and then we put it all together and we add extra things like facial hair. And uh, knowing how to add these things together and just giving you step-by-step -step tips and also just knowing how to see, uh, the face is actually not any more difficult than anything else you might draw. And by the time you have learned how to see things and how to translate that to paper, which is our goal and what we seek to bring you to, you cannot not succeed. <laughs> and so for our last little sneak peek into a lesson, I would like to give you a glimpse of my first lesson that teaches you how to put all of those elements together, the eye, nose, and mouth, to make the whole face. In the last three lessons, we talked about how to draw the eye, the nose, and the mouth, and now we're going to put them all together and draw the whole face. And so to begin with, we're going to do the shape of the face, and it might help you to think of this shape as like an upside down egg. So it's going to be kind of like an ellipse, but a little bit smaller at the bottom. And so we can just go ahead and draw that egg shape. And this is going to be a female face in this lesson, and in the next lesson we'll be doing a male face. And so now that we've got this shape, we can start putting the details in. And 
uh, most people, their, their face is a little bit more fine-tuned than this, and so we will go back at the end and tweak it, but this is kind of just a guideline to get started with. And so the first detail that we're going to work on is the eyes. And you may have heard, and you may not, that the eyes are actually in the very center of the face. Sometimes they look like they're farther up in the face, or on the head, and that's partially because of the way hairlines come down, and you just kind of expect the nose to be in the middle of the face since it's the it's the uh, middle uh, focal point on the face. However, uh, it's correct to draw the eyes in the middle. <laughs> and so we're going to put a real light line halfway down. And if you need to measure with a ruler to make sure that that's in the right place, you can. And we'll erase this later, but keep it light enough so that you can erase it. And so the eyes will be centered on this line. And now, if you divide the, f the line into five equal sections, that will tell us where to put the, the eyes this direction. And so you may have to kind of play with it a little bit to figure out where, that, where those would be. And so I think this one needs to be a little further this way on mine. Yeah, don't be afraid to erase and add as many times as you need because a little bit of fiddling with it now can save a lot of time and effort and frustration later. So now we've got our five sections and the side two and the middle two we're going to leave alone but the, the ones in between those, these are going to be where the eyes are. They're going to be as wide as those lines are that we put there. And so the face is actually the width of about five eyes across. And so we can go ahead and put the shapes of the eyes in there. And I find that it's easiest to work on the same thing with each eye before moving on to the next detail. And that's just because it helps me to make sure that they look the same, that they match. Um, if I go on and I continue to work on this one and I get it completely finished before working on this one, uh, sometimes I'll forget exactly what this used to look like because it does change as it goes. And so I'm just going to make this top side on both eyes before doing the bottom half. And remember the bottom side of the eye is going to be a little flatter than the top. And I go on to give you instruction uh, step by step for putting the whole face together until at the end we get something that looks like that. And once again, I take you step by step the whole way, giving you little tips and uh, also just pointing out the things that uh, the human brain might not process correctly, like thinking that the eyes might be higher than halfway up the head. Uh, we talk a lot about that in Art Talkin'. So finally, let's talk for just a moment about why Art Talkin' is affordable. We have decided to make Art Talkin' as low price as we possibly can because we really want it to be something that you can fit into your budget. And so we've made it $19 a month, but this is a price that is for your entire family. And uh, it's about as much as you would pay for one art lesson for a single person a single time. Uh, so you're saving so much money by buying Art Talkin' instead and you have access to the entire thing. You can learn how to draw um, and you can keep having new lessons all the time. We're always adding to these other projects that I didn't get to show you. But um, Art Talkin' is never going to stop growing. And you're, like I said before, your whole family can be working on it together, um, e all together in one place or in different parts. Whatever is best for you, it is uh, very flexible. You can make it whatever you need it to be. In addition to the course itself being affordable, we also offer you a seven day free trial, which allows you to experience it exactly as you would after you have the full membership uh, for seven days. And if you aren't pleased, all you have to do is cancel your membership and you will never get billed. And so that's a safe way to really get a sense of whether this is for you. And if at any time you have any questions, I would love to answer them. Please feel free to email me at any time at this email, maria.lang393 at gmail.com. 
Thanks again so much for your interest and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.